Hello. In this video, we are going to look at an introduction to CBA 1 in math, so classroom based assessment 1 in mathematics. When we go onto the CBA 1 tab in our OneNote, uh, we are going to see our instructions for before the first class. So before we come into our first class doing the CBA 1 project, we should have all of this done. So watch the video below. That's this video. That's the video you are watching right now. And come up with a question you want to answer in your CBA 1. Remember, it needs to be a question that you can write equations or algebra about in order to get a high grade. Now, at the moment, this may not mean a huge amount. But hopefully by the end of this video, it'll be very clear what we need to have done before we come into class. So, let's start up at the top here. We have an above expectations uh, example, that's this PDF. We have an in line with expectations example, that's this PDF. These are two different projects that have been done by students where they took a question and they answered it using mathematics. And that's what the CBA 1 project is. You're going to pick a question and then you are going to use the maths that you knew and particularly the algebra that you know in order to help you solve that problem. So we need to be able to figure out a question by ourselves or by yourself and then you need to use what you know about algebra to write that question as an equation and then try and do maths to try and find an answer to your question. You must use maths in order to get an answer to your question. And the more advanced maths, the more advanced algebra you use, the better your grade will work towards. So this person did an excellent project. They got above expectations. This is a very, very good grade to get for their project. Uh, and in line with expectations is a perfectly respectable grade, but isn't as good as ex above expectations. So. I'm talking about in line with expectations and above expectations. How do I know what's going to be above expectations and what's going to be in line with expectations? Well, one thing that I can say immediately is that it's not to do with the length of the project. This project here is 19 pages long. This project here is 28 pages long. And this is a far higher grade than this. So it is important to note immediately, making a project for a CBA in maths has to be full of good maths, not full of good English and not full of pictures. If there are diagrams or graphs or tables that we want to put in that involve maths, that can get us lots of good marks in our grade. But pictures or loads of English that has relatively little to do with the maths will actually take away from our grade, not add to it. So it's important that we are keeping ourselves focused to answering the maths question using maths as much as possible and using diagrams uh, and using tables and graphs. Absolutely. But not just pictures that we would take from the Internet that will take from our grade, not add to it. But we can be an awful lot more concrete than this. Let's have a look at the marking scheme for CBA 1. What's going to get us our marks is called the features of quality. And this is what it looks like. It's a big block of text and we're going to break it down by talking about it here. And also I've created a document that hopefully will help you to be able to work through it more easily. But let's look at this because it's important we be able to read this document ourselves. Across the top, we have the different grades we are able to get uh, in the exam. So yet to meet expectations means we have not done enough work to get a passing grade. In line with expectations is we passed, we did enough to pass. Above expectations means we did a really excellent project and exceptional is an extremely rare grade that is given out almost never 
for people who put an enormous amount of work in and do really excellent uh, mathematics pretty much independently of the teacher. So what are the different steps that get us from yet to meet expectations all the way up to exceptional? Well, they are defining the problem statement. That's formal language for pick a question and state it clearly. Find a strategy or translating uh, the problem into mathematics. Uh, that means take your question and pick a method that you're going to use to try and solve it that uses mathematics. For getting a high grade, this must involve an equation and algebra. There's no way around it. So using diagrams, graphs, tables, this is all excellent and will definitely bring your grade up. But past a certain point, particularly getting from this grade to this grade, you are going to have to use algebra. Even here, you would need to have a little bit of algebra most of the time. Uh, engage in solving the mathematics. Sorry, engage with the mathematics to solve the problem. This is the uh, core of your project where you're going to actually use your equation. You're going to use your graphs to figure out a solution to your problem. And you have to keep all of your work very neat. Keep all of your variables, all of the things you're measuring uh, and trying to work with in your question very clearly labeled and have all of your results as clear as possible. Having your thinking and all of your work very clear is a big part of getting a good grade. And finally, we have interpreting and reporting, which is largely what it sounds like. When we get a bunch of answers, can we look back at our original question and say, well, have I answered my question? Is there any way that I could answer it better? How could I discuss what I found out and the limits of what I found out? And we're going to try and look at a little bit of an example of that uh, in a while. But with the best will in the world, this is a very complicated block of text. There's lots of repetition between these steps, so it can be quite challenging to read. The way that this will be marked is as follows. We will look at your project. Myself and a team of teachers will look at your project and say, well, did we meet this criteria or did they do better than this? They will read through this for defining our problem. Uh, did they need a lot of guidance? Did we have to give them the problem? Did we only have to help a little? Did we not really have to help at all? And was the question very clear? Were they able to state what they were assuming in the question to make the question more mathematically easy to solve? Is their question very clear? Is it very um, well thought out? Have they made it very clear what they're assuming in the question? This is bringing you up along with the level of help that you got from the teacher. That's bringing you up in your grade. So again, a key feature of yet to meet expectations is the amount of help that you get from the teacher. If the teacher is telling you what question to do, if they're telling you what method to use to try and solve the question, then we're going to get yet to meet expectations. If we are uh, largely figuring out the question ourselves and maybe get a little bit of help in how to turn it into maths, then we would be moving towards in line with expectations. If we're just checking in to make sure that we're going on the right track, then that would still be OK for above expectations. And if we're very much just showing what we're doing and moving on by ourselves, that might be moving us towards uh, exceptional. The level of independence you show is part of what you get graded for in the CBA. But as I say, this is very difficult to read. So what I have done is taken them, done a little bit of translation work, uh, and instead of repeating them a whole bunch of times, I have just put all of the key points in as best as I'm able to in a single list. So if you're hitting all these points, then you're bringing yourselves up to above expectations towards that exceptional grade if we're working extraordinarily well. So uh, defining a problem statement, pose a problem statement. This was the first requirement that we had. Well, translating that into common English, what question do I want to ask? Break the problem down into manageable steps. We'll look at an example of how we do that in a moment. 
clarifies and simplifies making reasonable assumptions. Again, what do I need to assume? If I ask myself a real world type question, which is what we'll be dealing with in the project, there's so many variables that actually exist in the world. We can't deal with all of them at the moment. We don't know enough maths. So what simplifications can we make to make that manageable? That's what we're going to look at in a minute. And we keep on going down. This is all translated into a hopefully fairly readable uh, form for all four of our main sections of our CBA, of our project. So let's switch to a, well, let's actually start with evaluating a problem. So this is a document at the bottom down here to help you f uh, pick your question at the very beginning of your uh, project. So you could actually use this as part of your work for the first class. Uh, how am I going to pick my question? Well, this is evaluating our problem. And it again breaks this down and tries to give you a tick box. Have I hit all of these different points? Have I broken down my question? So we can use this to help us pick our question. And I've given it to you in editable form. There are little uh, text boxes that you can download this and fill it in so you can keep everything digitally. You can print it off if you prefer. Now let's look at a worked example of this. So we can see the difference here. I'm giving you this in editable form. This is fairly compact. I've now filled out a bit of an example. You can see they get bigger. There's no problem with making this take up a full page as we're going down through our thinking. So defining a problem statement, I'm picking what problem I want to ask. And the problem I decided I would ask is, how does a parachute work? Well, at the moment, that's not a very mathematical type question. So I need to start breaking the problem down into manageable steps. But if I think about the story of a parachute, what does it do? Well, it slows me down. Why? Because it has a lot of air resistance. If I open up my parachute, I have a huge amount of air whacking against it, and it's going to slow me down because of what when I go online, I see it, that's called a drag force. And that air resistance of the parachute, that drag force that it creates, opposes gravity. So gravity is pulling me down towards the ground as quickly as it can. And when I do more reading on this, I find that when the drag force is equal to the uh, gravity force, then I get to the fastest speed I'm going to get to. So when I am getting pulled down by gravity, it's accelerating me towards the ground and the parachute is slowing me down. It's preventing me from getting any faster. And at a, at a particular speed, I'll hit my terminal velocity where I don't get any faster. Gravity is being completely um, cancelled out from pulling me any quicker by the drag force. And that's called my terminal velocity where I don't go any quicker. Now that I've done that reading, I can rephrase the question, but I don't skip this over. This is an important part of the story for when I'm writing my final report. So I keep track of the story of how I came to my question. So now I rephrase my question. What effect does a parachute have on my terminal velocity? Well, it's going to make it lower and hopefully it makes my terminal velocity lower that I don't get killed when I hit the ground. So a person's terminal velocity without a parachute and a terminal velocity with a parachute. What would be the difference between those two things? I should have a much lower terminal velocity when I have a parachute than when I don't. What assumptions do I need to make? So there's a lot going on. If I actually look into the physics, when I go on and try and read about it online or in a book, I see there's a huge amount of physics going on in a parachute working. So there's a lot of turbulence going on in a real example. I can't handle that, so I'm not going to uh, try. So I say no turbulence. I'm ignoring breezes. It's all still air except me flying through it. I go online and I see that I have the drag force is this big complicated formula. But when I read it, all of these things should roughly stay constant. So I'm just going to find out what number they are and I'm going to leave them constant. And the only thing that's going to happen with a drag force is I'll have the area of the parachute and the velocity I'm falling with, the speed I'm falling with. I'm going to assume that my parachute is a circle because a parachute is complicated and I don't know the maths for the complicated shape. And I'm going to assume that the gravity stays constant and is the mass times the acceleration due to gravity. And you can have a read of how I've solved down to this part of my problem now where I make my force of gravity equal to my drag. I can draw lots of diagrams and that is what I need for now.